The benefits of using VVols with SAP HANA is you can begin to leverage all of the capabilities of vSphere, including vMotion, DRS, and HA. Today I'm here to discuss a reference configuration paper I authored, which basically involves the deployment of a SAP HANA instance on VMware virtual volumes, also known as VVols. VVols are basically containers on your storage array that encapsulate VM files, including virtual disks and other VM data. VVols are particularly advantageous compared to VMFS data stores for a number of reasons. The first and perhaps most important reason are that VVols are managed by a vCenter server rather than being managed by your storage array. So this is useful because when you go to deploy VMs on your vCenter server and you're adding virtual disks to those VMs, the VVols are automatically sized and exported to your host without you having to manually do so. The second is that when the VMs grow, so will the VVols within those disks. So you're not having to worry about over-provisioning a LUN and then um, having to go back and add more storage to it as your VMs grow. The third is that you reduce a lot of the workload on your production environment as more tasks occur at the storage layer, such as um, snapshots, for example. So let's dig into the hardware required for this solution. There are two main components of hardware. The first is an HPE ProLiant. And the second is the storage array to contain your VVols. The hypervisor of this solution was a VMware hypervisor. And then the storage array was an HPE 3PAR. Keep in mind that you can use um, any piece of hardware that is TDI certified and supports VVols, so you don't necessarily have to use a 3PAR, um, so long as it supports VVols and is TDI certified. Um, the two are interconnected via a 16 gigabit fiber channel connection. Now, the 3PAR is really a great choice for this solution for two, two main reasons. The first is that uh, it's has built-in thin provisioning and deduplication. And the second is that it has a built-in VASA provider. Now the VASA provider is a set of APIs that the vCenter server can use to establish, and it uses SSL certificates to establish a secure communication between your storage array and your vCenter server. You can also use, optionally, a VM storage policy to ensure that VVols are the sole means of storage for your configuration, if that's what you desire. In turn, once you register the VASA provider of the 3PAR as a storage provider within your vCenter, you can begin to establish the connection between your protocol endpoint of your 3PAR with your um, host. Now once you have this configuration, you could begin to deploy your SAP HANA VM. This particular solution used SUSE 12 as the OS, um, SP4 as the OS for the SAP HANA VM, but you can also use RHEL. So there are four different VVOLs that were configured with the SAP HANA VM. And the, in turn, those were four different virtual disks. The first VVOL was assigned to the OS files, the second to the HANA data files, the third to the HANA log files, and the fourth to the HANA shared files. Each VVOL was given its own SCSI controller with VMware Paravirtual as the SCSI controller type. 
Uh, these controller types, the VMware Pair Virtual, are really designed to handle higher workloads, such as uh, SAP HANA transactional data with your database. So it's really an optimal choice for this configuration. So this, uh, this configuration is really advantageous in a number of ways. You can begin to leverage all of the capabilities of vSphere, including vMotion, which lets you migrate your VMs between hosts, or uh, HA, for example, high availability, which if one of your hosts fail, it'll automatically boot your SAP HANA VM on your secondary host, um, in addition to DRS and other VMware features. Um, the, the second important thing worth noting is that you really eliminate the disconnect between your array and your host. Without using VVols, you're having to manually size and export um, your your LUNs, and this is problematic, especially when you start to scale um, and add more VMs. So you want, with VVols, the vCenter server will manage this for you. So thank you for taking the time to watch this. I wrote a whole paper about this. I would love for you to take a look, and um, thanks for watching. The link to the paper should be in the description below. Thanks.